Traversing a thousand feet below the island in the sky, the 100-mile White Rim Road is famous for some of the most rugged and expansive views anywhere on the Colorado Plateau. This is an adventure defined by solitude, wildness, and self-reliance. As you research and plan for the White Rim, here are a few tips that will help protect these unique qualities and reward your effort with an unforgettable backcountry experience. Under favorable weather conditions, the White Rim Road is moderately difficult for low-range four-wheel drive vehicles with high clearance. The steep and exposed climbs, deep sand, and technical rocks make the White Rim Loop a popular and challenging mountain bike ride as well. Motorcycles are permitted on backcountry roads and must be equipped and licensed for interstate travel in the state of Utah. Group size is limited to minimize sound and wildlife disruptions and keep dust down as a courtesy to others. Whether you are driving, pedaling, or riding, completing the White Rim in a day requires up to 12 hours of tedious and physically demanding travel. Consider shorter out and back options that make for a more enjoyable day trip. Permits are always required, regardless of your itinerary. When planning your day trip, know your skill and fitness level, as well as the mechanical condition and capabilities of your vehicle or bike. Make a realistic plan and stick to it. Check the weather and get road condition updates from the visitor center before heading out. Seasonal flooding and mud can make the route impassable. If the forecast looks spotty, consider turning around. Spring and fall are the most popular seasons to travel the White Rim, and temperatures can still hit over 100 degrees. The route is almost always exposed, and shade is at a premium. In winter, snow and ice can be a challenge. Vehicles should carry tire chains and a shovel and be prepared with all the necessary tools for trailside repairs. Always be prepared to self-rescue if you get in trouble. Relying on other groups for assistance is never guaranteed. There is no water along the White Rim Road. When in doubt, always carry more water. Watch your time, your fuel, and your energy. The White Rim Road is well-signed and easy to follow. Your vehicle should never have to leave the road. Drive directly over obstacles like rocks, sand, and mud. Straddle ruts and washouts, even if they're wider than your vehicle. When passing, use an existing turnout, dry wash bottom, or solid rock surface to pass other vehicles, motorcycles, and bikes. There are limited spots for passing. You might have to back up to an appropriate spot. Be patient, watch your speed, and be courteous to other drivers and cyclists. Mountain bikes and motorcycles must always stay on the road. Do not ride or carry your bike away from the road. In places like Murphy Hogback and Hardscrabble Hill, the road is only wide enough for one vehicle, and passing can be dangerous and nearly impossible. Be aware of challenges, drive slowly, and stop frequently to scout ahead on foot before committing to these technical sections. Photo opportunities abound from the road. There is never any reason to take vehicles or bikes off-road for photos. Even at iconic locations like Monument Basin, the best views are directly on the road. Other popular roadside attractions are accessible on foot only. At Musselman Arch, leave your bike at the pullout and preserve the opportunity to view the arch undisturbed by not hiking, scrambling, or climbing the arch. When hiking, always walk on marked trails, solid rock, or in sandy washes. Biological soil crust and desert vegetation is very fragile. These soil crusts are complex living organisms and the foundation of the desert ecosystem. One careless step not only destroys these fragile organisms, but increases erosion and leads to unnecessary unofficial trails. Pets are not allowed on the White Rim or other backcountry roads, even if they stay inside your vehicle. Use park-provided toilets for solid human waste or remove it in toilet systems. If you have to go during the day, plan on utilizing existing toilets at campsites and trailheads. Don't throw trash in the pit toilets. All garbage, both organic and inorganic, needs to be carried out. Make sure all trash and food is secure. Ravens and other animals are attracted to food and trash and will spread it. Carry a trash bag in your vehicle and pick up litter, even if it's not yours. Always make sure to leave it better than you found it. K-12 
Canyonlands is known for its remoteness and quiet solitude. Excessive noise diminishes that experience for everyone. Don't play music or yell echoes across the canyon, even if you think you're alone. Avoid revving your engine or driving a poorly tuned vehicle. Let the sounds of nature prevail. If you're patient and maybe a bit lucky, Canyonlands can offer amazing wildlife viewing opportunities. Bighorn sheep are particularly sensitive to loud vehicles and human presence. When observing wildlife, maintain your distance and remain quiet. Canyonlands is a living cultural landscape with an archeological record that spans thousands of years. Viewing these sites in person is a powerful and educational experience we are collectively responsible for protecting. Leave artifacts where you find them. Observe archeological sites from a distance and do not enter the surrounding areas or structures. Many of these sites are of sacred importance to people living today. So please, visit with respect. Carefully consider what photographs you share on social media. And remember, your digital footprint will remain long after you've left the park. Avoid posting tags with GPS coordinates and exact routes, and allow future visitors the joy of discovery. We hope these tips will help you have an unforgettable experience that builds a deep connection with Canyonlands. Immerse yourself in the wilderness, enjoy it with humility and respect, and preserve this experience for future generations. <laughs>